Blender and Houdini are two rival products that do the same thing but in different ways. We are told one is better than the other but it's really hard to know which one is until you compare them one to one. Today let's take a look at rendering and material creation in Houdini versus Blender. If you want to see how I created the cloth simulation in this video, you can check out my Houdini for Blender Artist course. Uh, this is just a new section that I've added on top of the older sections. Let's jump into the comparison. I, we all know that uh, in Blender is quite straightforward. If you have an object, uh, all you have to do is just create a new material in the side panel here or in the work area. You can create a new material and do whatever you want here. But in Houdini, it's a little bit different and it all depends on the render engine you're using. Uh, I'll be using Kama XP for this. The workflow is still comparable to Blender. In Houdini, uh, you're usually working in the object context, uh, which is this area here. Uh, an object context could be compared to edit mode or object mode of uh, Blender, like this. Uh, but uh, in Houdini, uh, they are usually called networks. So this object context is where you create everything. And then after you're done creating the objects, because here I modeled uh, this heart here, and then uh, created a, a simulation over it. Uh, to have these immersive uh, balloons, I uh, even unwrapped everything in this context and uh, then I uh, set up everything to be exported. And uh, when you're ready for rendering, you just switch to the stage area where you, you import everything. Uh, let me first turn off my lights here. Uh, actually, let me just go back uh, to the top here, change my render engine to uh, the default Houdini render engine. And you can see here. You're importing the objects you created in the object network uh, by using these nodes called SOP import. Uh, so you just connect them or link them to the objects network. So for example, here you can see the object network and the stage network. And inside the here, you'll see all the objects you created, all the nodes you created. You just have to look for the output nodes, uh, which would be, uh, for me, I named it balloons and lines and I imported uh, the balloons. You can see them here and uh, then imported in the lines. Uh, just like that, which I merged uh, into the same geometry and also have this background. You create the materials within the material library. So uh, you have this node called the material library and uh, inside it, you create all the materials you need, which is a bit different from Blender where you have all your materials in the material slots. You don't have a, net a network where you access all your materials at once. It's not that different. Uh, you create them as you want. So for example, if I want another material, I can create uh, the Kama standard material, which is equivalent to the Blender principal BSDF, basically this here. And uh, you can see the this has base color, metalness, roughness, and other inputs. Uh, same with this, if you enter uh, the material we just created, let me call this test. If you enter it, you have access to all those things. So if you go in the base, you can see you have base, color, roughness, metalness, uh, specular, uh, transmission, subsurface, everything is here and you build it up just like that. This also has displacement like Blender. Uh, so for example, if I wanted this to be maybe let's do a blue background, uh, I can use that. Now I can go in the specular, which is where the roughness is and make this very reflective and maybe even metallic. So I'll set this to one. Let me make this gold uh, so that it's easy to see. Uh, okay, so we have that set up and uh, it's one of the materials we have. You can see I have cloth, background, string, and test in the material library. Now, when it comes to assigning the materials, you add another node called assign material. And this is why I like to do these tutorials for Blender users because I know a lot of Blender users have been put off learning Houdini because we have been told it's really hard to, to use. But, but I've been using it for over two years now and I think it's one of the easiest program to learn and uh, its complexity d depends on what you want to do. It can be as simple as you want or as complicated as you want it to be, uh, which is the limitation with Blender. Blender has a limitation. There are things you simply can't do. Uh, in Houdini, it's going to be a limitation of your creativity, not the application. Anyway, so the material assignment happens here in the assign material node and uh, I just have to select the object or create an, in a new slot the same way you would create a slot here. 
for a new material i assign the material you want for example if i had multiple materials here i can even swap them like that and uh, the, the object assignment in blender is directly on the object it's where you create materials and uh, it's where you assign the materials in houdini that all happens on the node level so i can select the assign node material and i'll see this different slots i've created uh, for example i have the background set to be uh set here you can see i named it background i, I can remove that or even remove all the other objects materials and create a new slot and just importing the material that i want using this material path so i can select this input go to the materials and select uh the material node we created we created a material called test uh, but uh, we don't see it here because in houdini your materials are stored inside the material library but you have to bring them out to the surface of the material library by using this autofill so you can see before we had three now we have four materials including the test material we have just created so i can go to the assign and now i should be able to access the uh, test material like that so i've created a slot for it and assigned it there now i just need to select the geometry that i want this to be applied applied to the simplest way to do that is just going up here each input here represent a geometry for example this here represent the balloons uh this represents the lines on the balloons and this represents the background so if i want this to be this material to be on the uh balloons i just drag the balloons with the assigned material node selected to expose its parameters i just drag this to the primitives and that should assign the material and now if i set the preview flag to this assigned material i should see that this is now gold uh, though because it's uh, metal lens, that's why it's black so we can go uh, to the camera view and uh, to, to access the camera view i need to make sure that uh, this the display flag is below the camera so i'll just do it here even to include the lighting and i can now go to the camera and turn on the camera and switch to camera render here and you can see the balloons are now gold i can you can always go back to the materials example the test material and uh, i can increase the roughness to make this rough just like that it's very very simple uh, if you want to pick it up Houdini for Blender artists can be a good starting point. You will never escape Houdini if you are in the 3D industry, so I would recommend it to I would recommend you to pick, to pick it up as early as possible. Now the good thing is that your knowledge in Blender is going to be applicable in Houdini as well, and you can always use both applications. There is no reason to just swap out the other. Uh, it's just uh, they can easily complement each other. That's it. Thank you for watching. See you in the next video.